In this video, I'm going to review some of the styling options that are available in the Tracer Visual for Power BI. Oftentimes, as you're working through your dashboard, you're going to want to make your uh, visual have a certain look and feel to be consistent with the rest of your report um, or um, aligned with other portions of your presentation that might involve animations and, uh, and renderings and, and so on. So the Tracer Visual itself exposes a number of, of styling options, and the framework I'm going to be using to demonstrate these options are going to be tables of room objects uh, stored in this room elements table. Um, the room elements table is being captured out of Revit. You can see I have a simple sample model set up here representing an office space. Uh, wherein you have a mix of small, medium, and large offices, conference rooms, open working areas, and so on. Um, each of these objects also contains within them uh, different attributes for the kind of name and department, as well as some occupancy parameters. And I'm going to be leveraging these uh, to show how you can start to style your visual. So um, this model has been exported using the Tracer exporter um, in Revit. Um, and what I'm going to do now is jump into Power BI and start to render some of the, the room information with the, the visual. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the Tracer visual and it'll create an instance of this visual on the canvas. And I'm going to kind of drag that, extend it, make it a little bigger uh, so you can start to see how, how we can style things. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to then expand my room elements table that's been uh, brought in from the tracer export. And the first bit of information I want to pull out of this uh, parameter list is the element location. The element location is storing uh, GeoJSON uh, values within the the uh, database fields. And what I can do is as I drag that element location to geometry, it will render those um, uh, objects, um, draw them out in terms of this 2D diagram. I'm also going to do another step here, which is I'm going to take that same element location information and pull that into the summarized geometry input um, and make sure that this is set to one of the summarization options. This is a, um, a step that is required if you want this visual to interact seamlessly with other visuals on your canvas. So I'm just going to hit first there. So you'll see that we're getting uh, the boundaries of each of these objects and they're uh, being rendered in a singular color. Um, what I want to do is now give this some category information and the category field in the visual is the field that will uh, allow us to um, uh, understand the uh, you know, and organize the, the different objects here based on some some set of properties. Um, those could be numeric properties. Those might be the name of the 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 room. Uh, but we're going to use that. And what Tracer is going to do is it's going to auto assign, much like um, the other visuals in Power BI do. It's going to auto assign some colors based on the categories. And so we're going to get a different color per category. And because I'm using the name um, field. Each of these is indicative of a, of a different name. So you can see that this, this purple here, for example, is the, the large office. Um, if I go down to this purple, this is also a large office. So it's, it's color coded. Um, also the medium offices, circulation, these smaller offices, and, and so on. Um, and the way that I can kind of start to stylize this a little bit more is if I go into my format um, selection under visualizations, you're going to see a variety of different um, options here. And one of the areas that you'll probably be interested in is the data colors. Um, and this is where you can override and select a kind of a set of data colors that may align with other portions of your presentation. For example, um, you can select from you know the colors that are available there. Um, you may even just also opt to choose a different theme entirely. So in Power BI, out of the box, you have under the View tab this ability to change up your visual themes um, on the fly, which will auto assign you know, some of these different colors uh, to your to your visuals. But you know, if you want to be very selective about specific colors, you would do so using the data colors 
uh, tab under your visualizations. Um, the other, some of the other things that you can do um, relate to labeling of geometry. So there is a labels expander here, um, where if I turn that on, what that's going to do is it's going to label the visual objects based on what is supplied under the category field. In this case, it's going to be the name of the particular uh, room. And there are a number of styling options here that you can go through. For example, you may not want the background um, around the text. You just want, might, might want it to be a, you know, just plain text overlaid on top of your object. You can also change things like the font color. Um, uh, so the, the, you know, in this case, I'm now overriding it to where it's white on top of the color. You can adjust the text size if you want those to be a little bigger, a little smaller. Um, there's also this option here, it's called uh, clip by element. And you can kind of see this happening within the small offices and the small conference room where the text is being clipped um, and contained within that field. Um, and maybe in some cases you don't want that to happen. You want the text to extend beyond the boundaries of the object. So that becomes another formatting option that you may want to try. Um, under the elements tab, we can start to control um, certain aspects of the geometry. In this case, there's the ability to turn off edges. Uh, for example, if you wanted just this to be a, um, you know, uh, have the polygons not have a black edge around them, you can turn to choose to turn those off, and you you end up with a uh, a scheme that kind of looks like this, right? Where you know there are no edges, you're just getting the color fields. Um, now that could be problematic um, if you select on one of these objects and you know all, all the other stuff seemingly disappears into the background here um, as opposed to if I have the edges on um, and I click in uh, it will make the other uh, edge boundaries um, appear um, and so you still see the ghosted uh, other um, the ghosted objects there uh, but one way to get around that is if you turn off your polygon edges and go to your uh, background and turn on your background here and maybe you select like a a gray uh, background like so. If I click into one of these objects, it will you know turn the other objects white. So you know this might be an, an interesting kind of style of presentation you might want to to use in your in your in your dashboard there. Um, so I'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller and kind of pull this off to the side. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this visual as well. So I've copied and pasted it, and I'm going to bring kind of a duplication over here uh, of the same visual. And I'm going to style this visual just a little bit differently, and I'm going to use some slightly different data as well. So I'm going to go back to my fields uh, selection under the visualizations area here. And instead of categorizing things by the name of the uh, the room element, I'm instead going to use the occupancy values um, to, to uh, basically visualize uh, different colors. And um, I've set up uh, two uh, occupancy values here. I have the, the out of the box occupancy value that's assigned to rooms in Revit. It's kind of in this case being used to express maximum occupancy. And then I have a current occupancy uh, value as well. Um, and I'll look at the differences here. Maybe I'll start with the out of the box occupancy, which should be kind of understanding the, the maximum occupancy per space. And what you're going to see is it's going to uh, override uh, the previous color selection and, and now color things based on that uh, that numeric value and we can start to see that we have eight, 10, eight and four and you know the various occupancy values that are assigned to those different objects there. Um, but we're using a categorical way of assigning colors. So if I go to the format tab and go to data colors, you'll see that we have a couple of different styles that we can apply for how colors are assigned. In this case, it's using categorical. So it's using the established theme in Power BI to assign colors. We can also choose to use the single color, which will go back to that, you know, a single uh, color that I can, you know, override and so on. If you just want one color, um, that, that can be pretty handy in, in some cases. Uh, but since we're using numeric values, I'm going to choose a gradient color scheme. And what this is going to allow us to do is create a type of heat map visual. Um, and the heat map in this case is going to start us at um, the white and go to the 
gradient end, which is this um, kind of pink color. And what I'm going to do also to kind of clarify this, I'm also going to activate my edges in this case. I'm going to draw my point edges, uh, draw my uh, polygon edges, sorry, um, so we can see those boundaries. Um, and yeah, we're able to, to see this type of heat map of occupancy 20 being the highest uh, occupancy here, which is highlighted in the the, the bright pink. Um, then we have medium all the way to the lower occupancies to no occupancy, which would be this this hallway. Um, so, you know, I might also deactivate my background here just so I have I have two very distinct visual styles. This one kind of being more filled color, this one being heat map with boundary uh, information. And so what I can do, of course, is uh, start to play with these colors. If I want to maybe start off with a blue and go to a red, I could, could choose to do that and maybe, you know, have it be going more towards an orange, which will, you know, again, create this gradient effect, um, again, going back to the heat map concept. Uh, for this, um, and you end up with some pretty uh, powerful uh, visualizations of you know maybe some type of numeric value. And if I go back into my fields here, you know this is using the occupancy levels that are set, sort of the max max occupancy. I've also established what I'm calling a current occupancy, maybe reflective of um, occupancy levels of the the facility uh, as it's been leased um, and in in uh, in, um, in service, uh, essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and take the current occupancy and swap it out with the previous occupancy value. And we're going to be able to see um, a variation of this heat map. We'll be able to see spaces that have no occupants. Maybe these are free spaces. They haven't been leased yet um, in this current plan. Uh, we can start to see that the open office here has, has the most occupants still, uh, 15, whereas the previous occupancy value is 20. Um, and we can also see some some just some overall variations in the occupancy level. What we can also do with these visuals is use tooltips to convey uh, other types of information as well. Uh, maybe we want, for example, on this heat map to show the name of the room as well. And what you'll see is that in the uh, fields here, um, we can choose to set some tooltips. Um, those are going to basically populate this this tooltip when I do the hover over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the name of the space, and I'm also going to pull the department um, value out of this space as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. And what we're going to see when I hover over is that we're going to see uh, some of that information now populating that hover. So we can see that the current occupancy value is 6. This is a large conference room, and it's a shared space um, for this uh, overall facility. And as I kind of pan around, we can start to see that information uh, appear as well. And because we've set up these visuals in a certain way, if I wanted to go ahead and click through on one of them, uh, we'll, we'll start to see the visuals start to update uh, each other because they're set to be kind of interactive um, with the rest of the dashboard. Um, so that becomes kind of a handy trick. And of course, if I wanted to get in and start to um, align these visuals with other visuals, these visuals will be interactive with other um, graphs and charts as well. So maybe what I'll do here is uh, pull out a uh, donut chart. And in this case, what I'm going to do is um, use the donut chart uh, and have that be organized by a department. So I'll use the department as the, the legend, and then I'm going to use area as my values. And so what you'll see here is that we have our pie chart, and if I click on the offices, um, what that's going to do is it's going to uh, filter out um, anything that's classified as, as office um, from our, our visual set. And so we're now only seeing the office items, both in the context of the heat map, uh, but as well as the uh, departmental and um, kind of room name layout that we have in this other visual. So hopefully this provides some good context and what you can do uh, with the tracer visual in terms of styling it. Uh, we covered styling two visuals conveying um, different parts of the same room information. So we have one visual here, which is uh, based around the name of a particular office and we you know, deactivated edges and we uh, checked out some of the categorical ways of coloring. This one is based around the heat map concept wherein we're 
coloring things based on the occupancy value on in the context of a gradient. And we have, the, of course, the edges of the uh, facilities also active um, within uh, this this visual as well. Um, and we also took a look at tool tips for conveying uh, different parts of the information. Um, so there are a lot of possibilities here for you know, making these visuals your own um, and using them to design your dashboard layout.